I just cut these uh, Tulsi plants. I cut them all the way back because they have been growing and growing and growing. And they just really don't stop. And they make a lot of seeds. Lots and lots of seeds that actually receive themselves like crazy. Um, so yeah, I have this stuff actually planted all over the place. It makes a cute little flower, little purple thing that uh, pollinators love. I see um, little solitary bees and wasps on this thing all the time. There's one now. Oh, sorry. And um, so yeah, the, this thing, it grows like crazy. It's a type of basil actually. Uh, it's like Indian basil, I guess you could say. And um, it does very well. It did very well for me this year. Um, let me show you. So over here, I had these actually, these boxes were on the other side at the neighbor's uh, yard, but I brought them over here because I think I mentioned before, I'm not sure what he's doing. He's supposed to be selling the house. I don't know what he's doing. But anyway, I had this this uh, box here full of Tulsi and some strawberry plants, which are doing fine. They're still doing well. This thing needs some water. But anyway, as you can see, it's making a lot of seeds. But it's also like, it's just so, I don't like to cut it because um, the pollinators just love this, this plant. Can you see? Is it focusing? It's not focusing. You see that little orange thing? Anyway, whatever. Um, so yeah, it's like prolific. It grows like nuts. And the pollinators love it. And um, I think next time if I try to grow it, I might make like a hedge out of it. A little mini hedge. But anyway, so like I said, it makes a lot of seeds. So all this stuff over here on this side, in this box, these are all new plants that reseeded themselves from the stuff that's over here. So, I'm kind of losing my mind over here because I'm like, what should I do with all these Tulsi? I mean, it's really good stuff. Um, I have to look it up because it's been a while since I, since I looked up that information. But Tulsi is like one of those things that's like good for everything. It's a cure-all, it's antioxidant, it's anti anti this, anti that, and it's like very healthy for your body. So um, people like to cut it and make tea out of it, fresh or dried. It has an amazing perfume. It's kind of like basil, but a little more exotic, let's say, and um, really sweet. And I love it when, um, that's why I have it on the other side in the path so I can just walk by just walk past and just brush <laughs> brush against it and uh, get to enjoy its perfume so I'm about to do that walk past perfume is so sweet so anyway I would recommend that you grow this it's a very nice little thing um, it's good for your body. I think that you can also cook with it. I suppose that you can make all kinds of different things. You can experiment with the flavor and um, see what you think. Meanwhile, I think I'm just going to cut a bunch of this stuff and save it for tea. I'm going to dry it and save it for tea, you know, in the next, in the next few months. <laughs> If I don't cut any more, this is plenty for me probably, but um, I hope I can cut the rest of that stuff soon because, um, well, I don't know. I mean, like I said, those, 
those uh, plants, they make so many little flowers. And um, the pollinators love it, so I like to keep the pollinators around. Um, because if they're around, then they're here when something like tomato hornworm invades. I noticed a couple weeks ago, I was looking up this, uh, this tomato plant here, and there was a little hornworm. It was pretty big, but it was already covered in, like, um, larvae from the parasites. So I was very excited to see that. And, uh, today I just noticed... I noticed that. That tomato there. Deep, de-leafed. The leaves have been chewed off. I have not found the culprit yet. <coughs> but, um... I'm kind of looking for him. In any case, it seems to me that, um... Unless you're getting like a really bad infestation of tomato hornworm, that uh, you should just you know let let them let them uh, live because they complete the cycle. Um, you know, you plant your pollinators, plant pollinator plants, you know, flowers. The pollinators come. They dwell amongst your, your plants, and when the hornworm comes, they, um, you know, they inject their little eggs into the hornworm, and uh, the eggs hatch, they consume the hornworm, and then the hornworm decomposes. And then you have more babies, you have more parasites, wasps, and bees, or whatever, I don't know how... The bees. I don't think that the bees are uh, parasitized the hornworm, but um, you know, if you don't have the hornworm, then you don't have food for the parasites. So it's kind of a cycle. You kind of want to keep it going. Um, like I said, as long as they're not like totally eating up the whole plant, I say you know let them live. Let them become food for your your beneficials. So. That's what I have to say today. <laughs> Thanks for watching.